If you've got video files that just won't play back, you don't need to buy a new supercomputer because the problem isn't your hardware, it's your workflow. And this is the definitive guide to fixing it. I'm going to show you exactly how to set up a proxy workflow in DaVinci Resolve that will transform your editing experience from frustrating to fluid. When we're done, you'll understand not just how to create proxies, but why they work, which format to choose, and how to manage them like a seasoned professional. Now, let's start with the basics. A proxy file is essentially a digital stunt double for your original footage. Just like how a stunt double would stand in for an actor during a dangerous scene, a proxy file stands in for your high resolution footage during the editing. Think of it this way. You have cameras that shoot in 4K, 6K, 8K or more, and these files can be massive and packed with data. Your computer has to work incredibly hard just to play them back, let alone edit them smoothly. A proxy is an alternative version of that same clip. Same content, same length, but much easier for your computer to handle. You edit with these proxies, making all your creative decisions, and then when you export, Resolve will automatically switch back to the pristine originals. Another increasingly vital benefit of proxies is their portability. Because proxy files can often be significantly smaller than the original files, they're perfectly suited for collaborative and remote workflows. If you're editing on the go, you can generate a set of lightweight proxies, load them onto a portable hard drive along with a project file, and continue editing elsewhere on a less powerful laptop. Here's where most tutorials will skip a step. They tell you to make proxies, but they don't explain a very important decision you need to make first. The key to making that decision lies in understanding two types of video compression, intraframe and interframe. Now, don't skip this part because it's important, I promise. Let's start with intraframe compression. You might hear it referred to as all I or all intra. The term intra means within. In an intraframe codec, every single frame of video is compressed and stored as a complete self-contained image. Think of it like you've been shooting on film. Each frame of film is a self-contained image. If you want to look at frame 15, you just go to frame 15. Simple. Some examples of codecs that use this you might have heard of include Apple ProRes and Avid DNX HR. Because each frame is complete and self-contained, it makes scrubbing through the timeline buttery smooth. But depending on the format, file sizes can be on the large size. Then you have interframe compression. It's sometimes called long gop compression, which is short for long group of pictures. You've probably heard of codecs like H.264 and H.265 that work this way. Instead of compressing each frame independently, it will take groups of frames and store only what changes from frame to frame. You get three types of frame, an iframe or intracoded frame, which is a full image that has a larger file size. Then you have a P frame or predicted frame, and that only stores the changes from a previous iframe or P frame. It uses motion vectors to say this part moved here, and it's much smaller than an iframe. Then finally, you have a B frame or bi predictive frame. This stores differences using both previous and future frames. It's the most compressed, but it's also the most complex to decode. Here I've got some footage of a dancer. I'm going to duplicate the footage and set the composite mode to difference. It will turn black because the frames are identical. If I turn this lower clip into a freeze frame and then slowly step through the image, you'll start to see only the parts that are different from that first frame. That's the kind of information that's stored in a P frame or a B frame. Here's an example of how it works. Say you have a GOP or group of pictures that's 12 frames long. Frame one is a full iframe, so a complete image. Frames two and three are B frames, so they store the differences from frames one and four. Frame four is a P frame, so it stores the differences from frame one. Frame five and six are B frames, so they store the differences from frames four and seven. Frame seven is a P frame that stores the differences from frame four, and so on and so on. I know it sounds complex, but that's because it is. If you want to look at frame 8, your computer's got to start at the first frame of the group of pictures it's in, read all the instructions, and then build up to frame 8. That's why these formats sometimes stutter during editing, even on powerful computers. A lot of cameras record in interframe formats because they create small files, but editing software prefers intraframe formats because they're easier to decode. Now that you understand the science, let's talk practical choices for what kind of proxy file you're going to make. You have a couple of options. Let's start with industry standard intraframe codecs. You have Apple ProRes, specifically ProRes 422 Proxy, which is the smallest flavor, or 422LT, which is a bit larger. These will give you a good balance of quality and file size. Or we have Avid DNX HR. You could use DNX HR LB, which stands for low bandwidth, as an equivalent to ProRes Proxy, or DNX HR SQ, standard quality, which will be a bit closer to ProRes LT. Until recently, this used to be the best option for Windows users if you wanted to use IntraFrame, because you couldn't create ProRes files on a Windows machine in Resolve, but that's changed in a recent update, so now you can take your pick. The other option is to use a highly compressed format like H.265, which you might hear called HEVC. These can create incredibly small files, so they can be perfect for cloud collaboration. But didn't I just get done saying they were really hard to work with? 
Well, on Apple Silicon Macs, H.265 proxies can perform surprisingly well thanks to a dedicated hardware component called the Media Engine. This engine is specifically designed to accelerate the encoding and decoding of H.264 and H.265. On Windows, performance can be problematic and inconsistent. The free version of Resolve has very limited hardware decoding support for these codecs. That forces the computer's main CPU to handle the intensive decoding process, and that can give you poor performance. Now, while the paid studio version offers better support, some Windows users have still reported system crashes, instability, and occasionally sluggish playback. Now, I will say we're all using Apple Silicon Macs here, and I'm not super up to date on all of the improvements they've been making at Intel and AMD and the other chip manufacturers. So if anyone watching this is using a newer Windows machine, jump in the comments and let us know if this format still causes you problems. My recommendation, if all you care about is getting smooth playback and you aren't too worried about file size, just use ProRes or DNxHR. If file size is more of an issue because you want to put them on the cloud or you're just running low on space, then try H.265, but be aware you might still get some playback issues on an older machine if it's not optimized for using it. All right, I know that was a lot, but I want you to be able to make informed decisions. I don't like teachers who tell the how without telling the why. Now, Resolve has a couple of different ways to create proxy media. There's a manual on-demand approach, and then there's a fully automated background process that uses a separate side program. I'm gonna show you both ways, then I'll show you how to use proxies that you've made. Then we'll go through some advanced tips and best practices. Let's start with the manual process inside of Resolve. Before generating a single proxy, you need to configure your project settings properly. Open them up by hitting the gear icon in the bottom right, or just hit Shift and 9 on the keyboard. Navigate to Master Settings, and then scroll down to Optimized Media and Render Cache. Here you've got two critical settings. First is Proxy Media Resolution. You can choose a fixed fraction of the original resolution, like half, quarter, or eighth. I recommend choose automatically. This smart feature analyzes your footage and creates appropriately sized proxies. So say you were working with a HD timeline. 4K footage becomes half resolution, 8K becomes quarter resolution, and so on. Next, we have proxy media format. This is where you select your codec. As we just covered, I recommend ProRes Proxy or DNxHR LB, but if you want super small files, go with H.265. Now scroll down to working folders and you can set your proxy generation location. This is where your proxies will live when you create them. However, there is another setting that I find more useful. Close your project settings and go to the preferences in the menu on the top left, or by hitting command or control and comma on your keyboard. Under system, media storage, you'll see other options for proxy generation location. The middle option will default to whatever you set in the project settings, but I prefer the other two options in case you forget to set it correctly in those project settings. The top option in particular, proxy subfolders in media locations is very clever. You see, when you load footage into Resolve, it automatically looks for a proxy subfolder next to the original footage on your hard drive. If it finds one and the file matches up, then it automatically creates a link between the proxy and the original without you having to tell it, so you can start using it straight away. With the last option, every time you create proxies, you can pick a new location for them. You can save your proxies anywhere, and the faster storage you've got is the best option for smoothest playback, but if it gets moved at some point, you'll have to manually relink everything. Personally, I like to keep them in a subfolder next to the originals just so I don't lose them. Okay, to actually create proxy files, in your media pool, select the clips you want to convert, right click and choose Generate Proxy Media. If you selected the option to ask when creating in the preferences, it will ask you to select somewhere on your hard drive to store the files. Otherwise, you'll see a progress bar and Resolve will start to create your proxies. The downside, this locks up Resolve completely. You can't edit or color grade or do anything else while it's working. This method is fine for a few clips, but it's a bit impractical for large projects. In that case, you can use the Blackmagic Proxy Generator. It's a separate application that comes with the Resolve installation that runs in the background, creating proxies while you work. Now, the core of the Proxy Generator is something called a watch folder. You can designate any folder on the computer as a watch folder. From that point on, anytime new video files are copied into that folder, the application will automatically detect them and begin creating proxies according to the preset you pick. It automatically creates a new subfolder called proxy next to the original media files, just like that option I showed you in the preferences. So as the proxy files are made, they will automatically become available for you to use in Resolve without you having to manually link them in the original files. Here's how to set it up. First, click add and select your footage folder. This becomes a watch folder. Next, choose your proxy format from the menu. Your options here are way more limited. Then just click start and the magic begins. If you add more files later, as long as the app is still running, it will start transcoding them too. Meanwhile, you can launch DaVinci Resolve and begin organizing your project while you wait. 
The proxy generator also includes two helpful management tools. Delete proxies will remove the proxy files from the selected watch folders. That's handy if you're done with your project and you want to reclaim some space on your hard drive. Extract proxies will copy all the proxy files to a new location, which is useful for prepping a drive to send to a remote editor. Once your proxies are generated, it's super simple to enable them. The main control is in the playback menu under proxy handling. You'll also find a drop down in the top right of your viewers for quick access. You'll see three options. Prefer proxies, this is the standard editing mode. Resolve will use the proxy file for any clip that has one. If a proxy file is missing or was never generated, the system will seamlessly fall back to use the original camera file instead. Then there's prefer camera originals. This mode is used to review the full quality footage when performing color correction or visual effects or a quality check before export. If the original file is offline, for example, if you're working remotely and you've only got the proxy files, the system will fall back and display the proxy file, allowing work to continue. You also have to disable all proxies. This option forces Resolve to only use the original media. If an original file is unavailable, the clip will appear as media offline. This is useful for a final check to ensure all the original media is correctly linked before rendering the final master file. When working in a mode that relies on a fallback like Prefer Camera Originals, when the originals are offline, a purple line appears on the top of the clip in the timeline. This indicates the preferred media is missing and you're currently viewing the fallback. If you want to know at a glance what you're looking at, Resolve displays status icons in the bottom left corner of clip thumbnails in both the media pool and the timeline. These icons clearly communicate the state of the proxy media for each clip. The icons are a purple PXY over a white background. This icon indicates both the original and proxy media exist and are online and you're currently using the proxy file for playback. A white HQ over a purple background. This icon indicates that both the original and proxy media exist and are online and you're currently using the original high quality camera file for playback. You've got a purple PXY with no background color. This icon signifies that only the proxy file is online and the original camera media is missing or offline. If there's no icon, it means that either the proxy workflow has been disabled with the disable all proxies option, or that no proxy media has been generated for that specific clip. Let's quickly cover linking, unlinking, and relinking clips. Resolve provides full manual control over the relationship between source clips and their proxies. For instance, you can create proxy files in other programs like Adobe Media Encoder or Shutter Encoder and link them to the files in your project. With that said, these external proxies must adhere to three strict rules. It needs to have the same name as the source file, excluding the file extension. The start and end timecode must match perfectly, and the frame rates must be exactly the same. The entire proxy system is driven by metadata, and so this precision is crucial so that every edit decision made with the proxy corresponds to the exact same frame in the original media. To link these clips, select the source clip or clips in the media pool, right click and choose relink proxy media, then navigate to the corresponding proxy file or folder. If you move your proxy files to a new location, Resolve might lose the connection. You can re-establish it by using the same link proxy media command. To check the status and verify the file pass for your proxies at any time, switch the media pool to list view and enable the proxy media pass from the column heading right-click menu. To sever the connection between a source clip and its proxy, right-click the clip and select unlink proxy media. This only removes the metadata link within the Resolve project. It doesn't delete the actual proxy file from your hard drive. Beyond these fundamental tips for creating and using proxies, I want to show you some advanced features and workflows that will separate a basic user from a super efficient one. One of the most powerful features for remote collaboration is the ability to create a proxy-only DaVinci Resolve Archive, or .dra. This is a self-contained folder that bundles the project file with all of its necessary media. Resolve allows you to create a version of this archive that includes only the proxy media, and that makes it small enough to transfer easily over the internet. In the Project Manager window, Right-click on the project you want to share. Select Export Project Archive from the contextual menu. Choose a destination. In the Archive Options dialog box that appears, check the box for proxy media. And crucially, uncheck the boxes for media files, as in the original camera files, and render cache. Click OK. Resolve will create a .dra folder containing the project file and all the associated proxy media. As a safeguard, if any clip in the project, like a graphic, doesn't have a proxy, Resolve will automatically include the original media for that specific clip to ensure nothing goes offline. This archive can then be sent to a remote collaborator through any cloud service. The collaborator downloads the file, then uses the restore project archive command in their project manager to open the project. They can begin editing immediately using the proxies without ever needing access to the multi-terabyte original camera files. By default, DaVinci Resolve always uses the original camera files for rendering to the deliver page to ensure maximum quality. 
However, there are specific scenarios when exporting directly from the proxy media is needed, like if a remote editor is working from a proxy-only archive and needs to export a version for review. On the Deliver page, under the advanced settings of the render job, there's a checkbox labeled Use Proxy Media. With that check, the editor will be able to export a video without needing the original files. It's important not to confuse the proxy media workflow with the Timeline Playback Resolution feature. You'll find that under Playback, Timeline Playback Resolution. This is a separate tool that reduces the playback resolution of the viewer on the fly without creating any new files. It can be set to half or quarter resolution and provides an immediate, temporary performance boost. The proxy workflow isn't just about making slow footage playable. It's about transforming your entire post-production approach. By understanding the science of video compression and implementing these professional workflows, you're not just solving technical problems, you're actually unlocking some creative potential. Now, if you've got any specific questions, drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to get you an answer. While you're down there, don't forget to give this video a like to help other people find it and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any other DaVinci Resolve tips and tricks just like these. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.